Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Chester County Intermediate Unit Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating with this event. Um, we have some fantastic universities here with us today. My name's Josh, I'll be your facilitator. But before we get started, just a couple of announcements. Your camera and your microphones are turned off so the panelists won't be able to see or hear you, but you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. And I do encourage you to use this. Um, our panelists would love to answer your questions directly. Also, after this session, I'll be posting a link in the chat. Um, and we'll, we're inviting you to join a breakout room with all of the college representatives that are presenting this hour. So even other universities that are presenting in different rooms, um, you'll follow that chat link and to those breakout room. It'll last about 15 minutes um, between the end of this session and before the next session begins at the top of the next hour. Um, so, so do click through to that. Um, also, this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Chester County. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first uh, presenter from, from Susquehanna University. Thanks, Heather. Sorry, one second. There we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Heather Pearson, and I'm an admissions counselor at Susquehanna University. Um, so Susquehanna University is located in Sealands Grove, Pennsylvania. So it's about 45 minutes away from the state capital of Harrisburg. Uh, we are in a uh, rural community here in Sealands Grove uh, with a campus community of about 2,300 students or so. About 50% of our student population is from the Pennsylvania area, and the other half of our student body is from nearby states. At Susquehanna, because of our small community, we do really pride ourselves in our hands-on learning as well as our sm small class sizes. Our average class size at Susquehanna is 18 students with a student-faculty ratio of 13 to 1. With that being said, students will be assigned a academic advisor for all four years that they are a student, but that also opens the door for a lot of different opportunities. Not only will students pair with academic advisors as well as professors on campus for research opportunities, but they have a lot of opportunities outside of classroom as well. Some of our top majors at Susquehanna include biology, communications, creative writing, as well as our Sydney Y School of Business that we have a lot of students a part of as well. As part of our curriculum, 100% uh, of our students will have some type of significant cross-cultural experience through our Global Opportunities Program. This program is built into our curriculum to ensure that students become global citizens and so that they can experience a different culture outside of their hometown as well as Seal and Grove. So we have three different ways students can complete this. The first is a go short program, which are two to six week programs over the winter or the summer breaks. These are all faculty led and they either have a service or an academic component to them. The next opportunity students can choose from is a uh, go long trip. So those are your, your traditional semesters abroad where students will take a full course load of credits that will transfer back over to Susquehanna. And they'll also be able to live in that specific um, culture for a full semester. So they have the option of living in a residence hall or an on-campus um, room. Students also have the option to live with a host family depending on location. The third way students can do this is a Go Your Way program. So this is essentially an individualized trip for the student. Many of our students will go on these programs if they have a location in mind that we don't already have a program for or if they want to complete some type of research project in that location. So that is part of our curriculum here at Susquehanna that we really pride ourselves in. We are one of the only institutions in the country that has it as part of our curriculum. We do have um, a very strong networking on campus for students uh, coming from such a small school. I think that is terrific. So 96% of alumni are working either full time or pursuing advanced degrees within only six months of graduation. Not only is that a statistic that we pride ourselves in due to the fact of our small class sizes and our hands on learning experiences, but we do have a ter terrific alumni network that will help students both on and off campus uh, to achieve whatever they would like to do after graduation. We do have two different uh, 
areas on campus that will help with students with that, with the Career Development Center, as well as the Center for Academic Success. Uh, so they will sit down and have individual meetings with students to talk about what they want to pursue. As part of our application this year at Susquehanna, uh, we do accept both the Common Application as well as the Susquehanna Success app. In addition to that, we just require your high school transcript and then at, at least one letter of recommendation from a counselor or teacher. We are test optional and we have been since the 1990s. So if students don't think that that accurately reflects them as a student, then there's no need to submit those scores. Once students apply to Susquehanna, they're automatically considered for merit scholarship. So that is the academic performance in high school that translate to uh, their, to their uh, merit in college. So that will be awarded for the student for all four years that they are a student here at Susquehanna. And the top merit scholarship this year is up to $40,000. We do have some application deadlines coming up, um, November 1st and November 15th being early action and early decision. However, we are currently releasing admission decisions uh, as of right now. So if students apply, they should hear back from us in about three to four weeks. In addition to the application, as of right now, we are open for campus visitors. So we do have daily visits between Monday through Saturday um, with an individual uh, meeting with counselors, information session, students can sit in on a class, things like that. But then we also have um, different events throughout the fall as well. So we do have a Build Your Bright Future event on October 29th, which is a Saturday available for students as well as specific senior visit days that are specialized towards seniors. So students can visit us on our visit website to sign up for any types of visits like this. Um, and I will go ahead and put my email address into the chat function. So if you have any questions after today, feel free to reach out to me. And thank you uh, for listening and learning more about Susquehanna. Thank you so much, Heather. And up next, we have Derek Smith from East Stroudsburg University of Pennsylvania. Hi, my name is Derek Smith. I like to apologize at first. Um, I on my other laptop and it crashed on me, so I lost my presentation, so I apologize. Um, but I can give you a synopsis of the school. Um, East Roswell University is not the biggest, smallest state school in Pennsylvania, but we have over 6,000 students who come from 28 states and 16 countries. We're located in the Poconos, which is an hour or 10 minutes away from New York City, as well as two hours from Philadelphia. Our student faculty ratio is 16 to 1, which allows students the opportunity to develop a better rapport with the faculty. We have 58 undergraduate degree programs and 21 graduate degree programs. For our undecided students, we have an exploratory studies program, which we assign each student a mentor who will help them guide them in their studies to search the actual true um, potential in their career. Our Entrepreneur Leadership Center and Bloomberg Finance Lab allows students the opportunity to learn about business plan, financial projections, and stocks. Our tutoring service center is available to students to help them with classes, and we always invite class students to, to participate. We have about 3,000 students who live on campus in a variety of residence halls. We have a traditional and suite style, which get, allows students to have a bathroom and a kitchenette on their room. We have living learning communities where students can live in resident hall with students who have the same majors. Students have access to 24-hour computer labs, common lounges, and free laundry. Our career service is available to all students, and many students still use these services after they graduate. I always try to tell students to make sure you take advantage of these opportunities when looking for internships and trying to get a job outside of college. Speaking of internships, we have over 800 agreements with many companies, such as Nike, Merck, Disney, and the Eagles. And I would be remiss if I didn't say, uh, we do a lot of our internships through the Philadelphia pretzel factories, um, being that the CEO and founder of that factory is an alum of ESU, and he developed his business through our Entrepreneur Leadership Center. We have 110 special interest clubs and fraternities on campus, so I say you'll never be bored on campus. We're a Division II school with football, basketball, and many other sports, and I always invite students who are interested in a certain sport to give me their name, and I'll make sure I give it to the coach. And the coach will contact you to make sure and talk to you about your interest in the sport and how you can be a part of the team. 
to apply, we really just need an application and an unof and we do take transcript, but we do do an unofficial transcript. You can go on your student portal at your high school and take a screenshot and submit it. We're test optional for this year. And the majors that we require test for is nursing. For nursing, we require a 3.0 GPA as well as an SAT score of 1070. Um, essays are optional, but not required. Um, many of our students receive financial aid this year. Um, the fast performance released on October 1st. So I recommend everyone to fill those forms out as soon as possible. When you fill out the form, you can use the code 003320. By putting in that, that's the ESU code. When you put that code in, we'll submit your name to all grants, loans, scholarships that are available. And this year at East, East Stroudsburg, we have many scholarships, such as our first generation scholarships, merit scholarships. And we're actually this year, our first band scholarship that we're giving to students. And we also have many scholarships that we're giving based on GPAs. Um, now, so that you, so I always tell kids to make sure you apply now. And when you apply, I want to give everyone that I'll actually put in the chat, it's our waiver code. It's ESU 2022. This way, even on Common App, you can put that code or apply when you apply directly to us, you can use that waiver code. And the turnaround that we actually do is about a two weeks. So two weeks when you actually submit the application and we receive all the transcripts and everything. And within two weeks, we'll let you know whether you got in or not. Thank you. Thanks so much, Derek. And up next, we have Brian from Moravian University. Oh, no, Sarah. OK, <laughs> no problem. Apologies. Yep, it'll be me. Um, I am going to pull up my screen for us real quick. Um, so my name is Sarah Jane Groves. I am one of the admissions counselors at Moravian University. Um, I have my colleague Brian here. He's new, so he's learning what six by sixes are all about. Um, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Moravian University. And I also wanted to say, I'm really glad that we went right after uh, Susquehanna and East Stroudsburg because a lot of students that end up applying to Moravian also apply at East Stroudsburg and Susquehanna as well. So know that a lot of the information that you heard from both of those schools is very similar to what you'll know about from Moravian. Um, now, if Moravian University sounds unfamiliar to you, it's because we were a college up until this past July. Um, so while we have been operating as a university for years, the name changed just recently happened, but please know that um, our, our history and our community has not changed. So how we have educated our students for um, over 280 years at this point um, is still continuing. We are located in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, on the historic side. Lehigh University is right across the bridge on south side Bethlehem as well. So if you've been to Lehigh, you've been to Moravian. Um, as I mentioned, we were founded back in 1742. So we are the sixth oldest institution in the country. Um, located right in this historic area. This is um, uh, Brethren's Hall on campus where um, George Washington stayed when he visited the Revolutionary War Field Hospital at the time. So just a little quick trip. Um, we are about, oh my gosh, what's happening in my slides? We're about 60 minutes from Philadelphia and 90 minutes from New York City, but think about Bethlehem as more of a quaint little town. Um, so it's a nice bridge between a large city and a small town um, where there's a lot of festivities going on all the time. Um, location wise, you do get the best of both worlds here at Moravian while we are located in a little bit of a city atmosphere, you do also have mountains and everywhere close by as well for hiking. Um, so you have the nicely secluded sized and secluded campus. And right down the street, we have this active city center of Bethlehem. Um, we are, while we are uh, 280 years old, we do really still lean into modern education and try to give our students the best advances in modern technology as best as we can. Um, this is in the Sally Brightham Center for the Health Sciences, which is our newest building on campus. This is a virtual cadaver lab. Um, we are the only virtual cadaver in the Lehigh Valley, which is pretty cool. Um, in addition to that and leaning into technology, we are an Apple distinguished school, meaning every single student that's coming in gets a MacBook Pro, an iPad, and an Apple Pen. We've been Apple distinguished since 2018 and we just renewed it until 2024 as well. Um, we are a completely wireless campus. All staff, faculty, and students are on the same technology, meaning that we were prepared for the pandemic before it ever happened. Um, so our students didn't end up missing a single day of classes because of that. Um, all of our TVs around campus, TVs, presentation screens, and all of that are Bluetooth and Apple Play enabled, meaning 
that you can turn any screen on campus into a group study and presentation space. For me, when I was in school, it was a nice little break during finals to be able to throw maybe Jackbox games and play with some of my friends. Um, how do we put that technology to use? We have over seven different pro 70 different programs of study. Most popular are our nursing and our health sciences, as well as education, business, and natural sciences. We are also widely known for our amazing music program, but I may be biased as a music liaison for the admissions office. You do have the ability to double major, major minor, as well as self-design a major at Moravian. Uh, while we are not only learning inside of the classroom, you're also learning outside of the classroom through hands-on experiences. As part of being a liberal arts university, you will be taking courses um, in all different majors of study and programs of study, not just specific to your major. Um, so you'll round out your education with your major, your electives, and those um, liberal arts credits as well. At Moravian, we are a small private liberal arts school. So we have uh, about 2000 undergraduate day students. Our average class size is 17 which might be even smaller than the classes that you're used to right now. And our student faculty ratio is 11 to one. Um, we really pride ourselves on having very close relationships between our staff and faculty, as well as our students. Um, they are very accessible. So your professors are gonna be very accessible to you at all times, um, whether it's during office hours, email, even by phone numbers. Um, and trust me, the better that you get to know them, the better, the better for you. Um, by thinking about learning outside of the classroom, we have over 80 different clubs and activities on campus, as well as 22 different D3 sports. Um, so there's always something going on on campus. Our Moravian Activities Council this past week, leading up to homecoming on Saturday, had an event every single day last week. Um, they posted their event calendar at the beginning of August prior to the semester and have about 40 different events just a semester for that one club. So think about all the 79 other organizations on campus. There's always something going on. Um, we also have Greek life about 20% of students do participate in Greek life, um, as well as major specific clubs and honor societies and community service organizations. Um, about a third of our students do participate in athletics of some form, um, whether that is through the NCAA D3 sports or um, club sports like rugby, cheerleading, esports, or intramurals as well. Um, Getting hands-on experience at Moravian is built into your degree. Um, there are a ton of different internship and externship um, uh, capabilities and, and opportunities for you, some of which are built into the program. Thinking about clinical placements for our nursing students, that starts your sophomore year, where you'll get over a thousand different clinical hours throughout um, St. Luke's University Health Network and Lehigh Valley Health Network too. Um, same thing goes for our education students who start out with their student teaching experiences, either spring of their freshman year or fall of their sophomore year getting you in there early and often. Um, study abroad opportunities are built in with our Elevate program, which I'll talk about in just a second, but um, you have the semester long option as well as those shorter terms semester, um, the spring break or the May term as well. About 71% of students at Moravian University participated in some form of civic engagement each year um, and community service is built into our um, heritage at Moravian. Um, research is also another really great thing that is available to you as a student. As I mentioned, Elevate it's a brand new program for us at Moravian um, with your dedicated team of academic advisors um, that are going to help you with graduating on time. 95% um, of our students graduate within four years and we have a 97.81 career placement rate. Moravian is free to apply. Um, we are test optional and have been since prior to the pandemic for all majors except for nursing. For nursing, we do have specific uh, admissions requirements, which I am happy to talk about later in the breakout session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Now we'll hand it over to Jim from Marywood University. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. Uh, let me just share All right. So thank you, everybody, for joining today um, and learning a little bit about all of our schools, but especially Marywood University. Um, so a little bit about Marywood University. We are located in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, we're just a little over two hours from New York City and Philadelphia. Just some fast facts about Marywood. We have about 3,000 students on campus that is undergrad and graduate combined. Our class sizes when you're in your elective courses are about 30 to 35 and in your major courses they're about 20 to 25. <clears throat> so what that means is you know smaller class sizes you get that one-on-one -on -one attention from not only your classmates but also from professors, advisors, um, and different faculty members as well. Our student to faculty ratio is 12 to one. And as you can see, there are some percentages there for you. 99.7% um, of our, uh, two years ago, our class uh, pursued graduate school 
or is now employed. Marywood is a day one school. And what that means is right away from your first semester, doesn't matter what your major is, you will get started right in that major and taking those core classes. So um, some examples are here. Architecture is one of our top programs. Um, in more unique programs, you get a design studio and your own workstation your first day. Aviation, students get to fly their first semester. Education, you're gonna start doing observations and so forth. Um, as I mentioned, architecture, as well as our PA program, nursing, nutrition, um, and our CSD, speech pathology, are probably our top programs. Uh, but as I mentioned, you get that day one experience in any major that you choose. A little bit about student life at Marywood. We have over 100 clubs and organizations ranging anywhere from your major club to music and arts to faith and service, commuter club, honor society, sororities, campus ministry. Um, you know, I get a lot of students that are in a major like nursing and want to do something with music or art. You don't have to major or minor in it to do it. You can uh, join any of these clubs. Um, for something that you enjoy doing outside of your major. Study abroad is a big opportunity at Marywood. Um, some of our programs like art, architecture, and nutrition do uh, have se semester-long placements, but any student at Marywood does have the opportunity to go study abroad. Uh, Florence, Italy, Austria, uh, Vienna, uh, Paris, any of those are different options. I know our campus ministry does their ser service events um, study abroad as well. Housing and residence life. So here at Marywood, our freshmen live in one hall altogether. There's no upperclassmen, anything like that. Our dorms are all suite style. So it'd be two to a room, connected to a bathroom, connected to two students on the other side. So the four students would be sharing that bathroom. There's no communal bathrooms of, you know, the whole floor is sharing. The nice amenities in each room, uh, there's free cable, free Wi-Fi. There's also AC and heat for students to control on their own. There's also free laundry on each floor. So you just take it down, no quarters, no swipes, anything like that. All students are allowed to have cars on campus and there is no parking fees. And we do have guaranteed housing as well for all students. Some things to do around the Scranton area. Um, so right downtown Scranton, which is about a four or five minute drive. We do have the marketplace at Steamtown. We have the aquarium and reptile den. Dixon City is only about a 10 minute drive. That's gonna be your shopping district with Walmarts, Targets, different restaurants, stuff like that. And then uh, Montage Mountain is just about another 10 minute drive. That is our ski resort, water park, concert venue, and also the AAA affiliate of the New York Yankees, which is the Scranton Wilkes-Barre Rail Riders also play there. Marywood has 22 varsity division three sports. Uh, we are a member of the Atlantic East Conference. Here are some examples of these. We also have 25 intramural and club sports as well. So if you didn't want to play at the Division III at, um, level, you can also join a club or intramural sport. Esports is also new uh, this fall. Our students play Overwatch, League of Legends, and Rocket League. They compete with other schools that also offer esports. Um, so that's one of our new attractions. The admissions process at Marywood, we do take our own application on our website or the common application. Uh, you will get a decision back within seven to 10 business days once we receive the, um, all the required documents. That includes a uh, completed application, official high school transcript, letter recommendation, and then your SAT and ACT, we are test optional for fall 2022. Merit scholarship, all first time students will receive a merit scholarship. That ranges anywhere from 16,000 to 23,000 per year. And that is good for all undergrad years. That's solely based on academics. Um, so your GPA, SAT, ACT, support, stuff like that. Um, and then there are some examples of our other uh, scholarships that we offer as well. Marywood also accepts all external scholarships. So anything you find through your high school companies um, online, we will take those as well. And they will not affect these merit scholarships. We'll just stack those on top. Marywood is open Monday through Friday and select Saturdays for in-person visits. Uh, we are also hoping or hosting um, in-person open houses on October 30th and November 13th. Um, and we're also doing virtual visits and tours. So if any students are interested, they can go right on our website and register for those events. And here are different ways you can find us on social media. And I will also put my email in the chat 
And like I said, I hope we see you guys on campus. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. And up next, we have Kate from Marist College. Okay, hi, thank you so much. Um, my name is Kate Bozinski. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admission at Marist, which is a liberal arts college located in Poughkeepsie, New York. And I'll start by showing you some footage of our campus here. Um, so we have a pretty traditional um, college campus with lots of green spaces and beautiful buildings. And what's unique about us is that we're located right on the banks of the Hudson River. Um, so you can see from some of this footage that um, I, I think it's what you think of when you when you think of a college campus. Um, it's really beautiful, um, lots of quad spaces and um, you know, uh, it's, it's very idyllic in, in how it looks. Um, but at the same time, we are 90 minutes north of New York City and 90 minutes south of Albany. So we have this beautiful campus, but also access to two major cities, which is very convenient for our students for internships, um, but also for traveling to us from other areas uh, via public transportation, because we are on two major train lines. Um, so it makes it easy to connect into Albany and New York. We are a medium-sized college, which about 5,500 students um, at the undergraduate level. And our students are coming from all over the country as well as um, all over the world. So geographically, we're a pretty diverse campus. Um, we also have diversity of majors. So there's over 40 programs in total, and I'll talk more about those in just a moment. Um, but one thing I do wanna point out is that if you are an undeclared student, then you can be undecided at Marist for up to two years. So there's a lot of time to really explore different academic areas um, and you know, even try some things out uh, before firmly deciding on what you want your major or major and minor or double major to be. Um, so there's a lot of academic fluidity and time for exploration. We do have small class sizes um, because we do have a population of 5,500. We're able to have classes of about 20 to 25 students on average with a maximum class size of 35 students. We never have classes in a lecture hall setting or auditorium style, so you really get to know your professors. And sometimes the classes can be even smaller than that, you know, maybe 10 students or 15. Um, so you really get to know and master the material. We also have most of our students living on campus. It is definitely a tight knit community of students and that residential aspect I think plays into that. Um, and, you know, because of a lot of these things, because of the community, because of the small class sizes and attention from professors, um, along with some other things I'll mention later, our students are very successful when they leave. Um, so as you can see from the statistics here on the right, our students are finding jobs and graduate school placement at, at a very fast pace after leaving. Um, and they're also graduating um, at, at a higher rate than um, public and private schools on a national average. These are our majors. So it's, a, it's an extensive list. I'm not gonna talk about all of the programs. I will just mention that some of our most popular programs are communications, business administration, fashion design and merchandising, computer science and cybersecurity and other technology related fields, um, as well as the sciences. We've seen an increase in interest in the sciences over the past several years. So I think it's a unique mix of majors that are popular, um, which is cool in a liberal arts setting because everyone has that, that well-rounded base of education, um, but has that expertise in their major. Um, and like I said before, we are 90 minutes north of the city. So a lot of our students um, take advantage of that for internships. Um, and some of the most popular programs that we have are in those more industry focused fields. So for something like fashion or communications or business, going to New York City makes a lot of sense. Um, so whether it's going to New York City for an internship or doing research, there will be some sort of hands-on experience that you have as an undergraduate student at Marist, um, at least one experience. And um, one thing I do wanna point out about New York City is that we have a program called Marist in Manhattan where you can spend a full semester living in New York City, um, kind of like a study abroad program, um, but not abroad for one semester and doing a full-time internship. Um, so that's kind of a unique way to incorporate that city environment into your four years without spending four years in a city if you want that traditional campus life um, as well. 
But you can see from the photos happening here in the back that our students are having lots of hands-on opportunities right on campus with our investment center. Um, you know, like I said, going to New York City, as you can see here, network, networking with alums, studying abroad. Um, they're doing all of these really cool things which prepare them um, completely for, for jobs or graduate school placement after they leave. We also have a very vibrant student life environment um, with over 80 clubs and organizations on campus. They really range from performing arts to student government to Greek life. Um, we're also division one for athletics. So there is that element of school spirit on campus. Um, we have 23 varsity D1 teams as well as club sports and intramural sports too. Um, so getting involved in general is very easy. There's, there's something for everybody. And like I said, most students are living on campus for all four years. So that involvement plus the, the residing on campus really adds to the community. If you're interested in applying, these are our deadlines. Um, we are on the common application. And something else to note is that we are a test optional institution. So you can see these ranges here of um, average GPA and test scores for admitted students. Um, those ranges for test scores are for students who chose to submit to us. Um, and it's really, it's not that many students who choose to submit. So if that's a pain point for you, then certainly feel free to leave them out. Um, we also have uh, merit-based scholarships that all students are considered for when they apply. Um, and they range from 10 to $25,000 per year. And then these are the ways you can connect with us. We have visits seven days a week on campus, including two fall open houses, plus virtual programs. Um, and you can always feel free to reach out to me too. And I'll put my contact information in the chat. So thank you. Thanks so much, Kate. And coming up next, we have Canisius College. Hello, everyone. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Sam. I'm with uh, Canisius College. We are located in Buffalo, New York. Um, so we are located about 90 minutes from Erie, Pennsylvania. So we're on the western side of New York State. Um, we're really close to um, Toronto as well. Uh, so we are over on the other side. We're about six and a half hour drive from Philadelphia um, or a quick 90 minute flight. Um, as you can see here, this is our campus. Um, so we are in the city of Buffalo, but even though we are in the city of Buffalo, we have some green space on our campus. You can see here some of our academic buildings as well as some of our residence halls for our students. So we were founded in 1870 by German Jesuits um, and we are named after St. Peter Canisius, who was a Dutch priest and saint. Um, we're centrally located in the historic Hamlin Park District of the city of Buffalo. So we're about 15 minutes from downtown. Uh, Buffalo is a mid-sized city in New York um, and we have a lot of great opportunities for our students. Um, we're a smaller institution, so I'll touch on our numbers in just a second. But even though we're a smaller institution, we really consider the city of Buffalo to be kind of an extension of our campus. Being a mid-sized city, the city of Buffalo has a lot of great opportunities for students. Um, we have local as well as national business. And the Western New York area has a lot of really awesome opportunities for students to uh, learn and explore. Um, we are one of the 27 Jesuit colleges and universities in the United States. And we are part of a global network of more than 200 Jesuit institutions. So as I said, I talk a little bit about our population of students. So we have uh, just over 2,800 total students. Um, so that does include our graduate student population. So we offer undergraduate degrees as well as some uh, master's programs as well. Even though we're a smaller school, we have students from 40 different states and 21 different countries. We have an average class size of 19 and 11 to one student to faculty ratio. Because we are on that smaller side, our students have a lot of opportunities to make those connections with their faculty and make connections around campus through student organizations, clubs, and other opportunities to make connections. We have three different divisions of majors at Canisius. So we have a College of Arts and Sciences, a School of Education and Human Services, and then our School of Business. So our College of Arts and Sciences is going to be the biggest division of majors, um, and that houses our humanities, sciences, and social science programs. So 
housed within that program, housed within that division of majors, excuse me, you'll find programs like criminal justice, psychology, biology. We have a unique major called animal behavior, ecology, and conservation for students who are interested in working with animals. Um, so we have a lot of really great options for students within that division. We also have programs like creative writing, history, and a lot of great opportunities for students to dual major or major minor. Moving on, we have our School of Education and Human Services. So this is where you'll find our education majors. So we offer programs within the childhood area as well as adolescent education. Our education majors are in, a, in the classroom as early as their freshman year. Hands-on experience is something that's really important to us at Canisius and having that opportunity to learn and grow. We also have programs like health and wellness and sports and exercise healthcare for students who are interested in the health field. And then we also have a sport management program. Um, the city of Buffalo is a great place to study the field of sport. We have some great professional sports teams, including the Bills, Sabres, Bison. So there's a lot of great opportunities for students who are interested in that area to really explore and learn within that field. <clears throat> and then last, slip but not least, is our School of Business. Our school of business has six different majors. Um, I listed them up here and they include accounting, accounting information systems, economics, finance, management, and marketing. Um, and then we also have an MBA option as well for students at the graduate level. In addition to our majors, we also have pre-professional advisement. So we have pre-law and we also have a three plus three J plus JD option. Um, we have an 87% acceptance rate into law school. We also offer pre-health. Uh, we say pre-health because that advisement supports students through a lot of different areas of interest, including pre-med, pre-dental, pre-vet, and so much more. Um, our, these two tracks would be advisement programs and they would not be majors. Students would choose a major and then receive that advisement from those pre-professional programs. We also have some special programs that I want to highlight. So students are able to apply to Canisius Undecided, and they can be a part of our Pathfinders Academic Exploration Program. The Pathfinders Program is a great program for, for students um, who are undecided, and it allows them to go through guided self-assessments to identify their strengths and interests. It's a great program for students who are undecided in their major and not sure what to major in, or maybe they have a lot of areas of interest. So it really helps them through that process of declaring a major. We also have an all college honors program. Um, so it's a selective interdisciplinary program and students complete an honors thesis that's done in close collaboration with faculty. We also have something called business experience for our undergraduate business students. Um, and what they do is students apply the concepts that they learn in the classroom to real world business challenges. It helps them learn to work with other students and become leaders within the field of business. And I want to talk about the support that we have for our students. So at our Griff Center for Student Success, does a lot of great things for our students. They do academic advising. They support students with career support services, like resume writing and mock job interviews. And our career support services are a lifelong alumni benefit. So students who graduate from Canisius can come back and receive those same support services. Here, um, we have a lot of different ways for students to get involved. We have undergraduate research opportunities, opportunities for students to hear from guest speakers. We are also Division I athletics, and we also have club and intramural sports as well. We also have um, study abroad opportunities through campus ministries, as well as more traditional short trips and long trips. And then to kind of finish up, to apply our application is free. We are on the Canisius application as well as the uh, common application. Our application is free and we are test optional for students applying to be first time freshmen for the fall of 2022. Thanks so much. And I will put my information in the chat. Thanks so much, Samantha. Um, and that concludes our presentations from the universities, but I would like to invite um, all of our panelists to uh, turn their uh, screens back on um, or turn their their cameras back on um, and I want to ask them all if they could answer this question for us using the last few minutes that we have. Also, if you have any questions to address to any of the panelists, you can do that now using the Q&A uh, feature. Just click there, type a question to anybody and they'll be able to answer that for you. But um, while you're doing that, let's um, go around. Uh, we have about five minutes, so each of you can, you know, maybe 30 seconds answer this question. Um, what's the one thing that uh, you want everybody to remember about your college or university. Um, we'll go in the same order. So Susquehanna can go first. 
Awesome, thank you. I would say the one thing to uh, keep in mind about Susquehanna is our Global Opportunities Program. So students um, can go for a couple of weeks over the summer or the winter, they can go for a full semester or they can create their own trip. All these programs uh, that we offer for students, uh, they get to choose which one they go on. So they can be domestic or international. Um, and with our business school, students are guaranteed an international internship with our Global Opportunities Program here at Susquehanna. Great. Derek from East Stroudsburg University. Uh, one thing about our campus member, it's, I say it's, it's a, a lot of great programs that we have, our athletic training, our nursing programs, education. Also, I want to point out, we have a lot of, again, a lot of scholarships that we're giving out this year. And probably the biggest thing I just wanted to say is just come to the campus, visit, um, come to all the campuses, visit and really get a feel of the campus and get a vibe and see it's the campus for you. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and up next, um, Moravian University. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I would say um, remembering about Moravian, right? Um, while we are historic and absolutely have that historic charm and a beautiful campus, um, also, you know, remember that we do lean into modern education as it advances with technology as well. We are that Apple distinguished school. So you would get a MacBook Pro, iPad, and Apple Pen as part of your tuition. Um, another fun fact about Moravian that I personally benefit from is the fact that we are a dog friendly campus. Um, so my dog Luna comes to work with me while I am at uh, on campus um, as do another member of our admissions office and the president as well. So if you come to an admissions event, you'll probably meet our Greyhounds, Mo and Benny. <laughs> Thanks so much. And Jim from Marywood University. One thing um, I would want students to remember about Marywood University is that we are that day one school. Um, and students getting that day one experience. I know I am a Marywood alum myself. And that was one of the reasons I chose Marywood. Being able to get into your field and into your program right away as a freshman um, and not just taking all elective courses, I think is a huge step for, for students, especially freshmen, just to make sure you're on the right track and in the right program that you want. And Kate from Marist, what's the thing you want us to remember? So I would say that um, we have the power of a global university with the personal touch of a liberal arts college. Um, so in terms of being, you know, having the power of a global university, it's amazing study abroad, it's access to New York City, it's really um, sought after internships, um, being a D1 school, research opportunities, so all these great things, um, but at the same time, small class sizes, um, you know, a nice residential community, things that that um, you're not sacrificing the, the size and the experience for these, these great, um, you know, kind of large scale um, experiences. Awesome, thanks Kate so much. And last but not least, uh, Canisius College, Samantha. Thanks. So I would say just remember that um, Canisius is a smaller school with a really close knit campus community um, that really encourages students to learn from each other and find those opportunities to make those connections on campus with whatever their area of interest might be, whether it's with faculty or other students that they meet in their classrooms. Um, and being in the city of Buffalo, we have so many awesome opportunities for our students and um, to really kind of learn and explore not only right here on our campus, but within the city of Buffalo as well. Great. Thank you so much, Samantha. And with that, um, we will conclude uh, this portion of the hour's presentations. Thank you to all of you so much for joining us. Um, when you close your window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We really appreciate the feedback you can provide there. And as I um, mentioned at the beginning, um, now I'm going to paste a link into the, the chat so you can all see this Zoom link there. You can click on that, um, copy and paste that um, into your browser and uh, join all of the colleges that presented during this hour for the next 15 minutes of, uh, of chat back and forth. Um, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as recordings of all the other sessions that have happened as part of this college fair at strivescan.com slash Chester County. Um, thank you again to all of the panelists and thank you to all of you uh, who joined us for the presentation. Have a great rest of your evening. Bye-bye.